Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church. Hope you've had a wonderful, brisk, clear, crisp, did I say crisp twice, uh, Sunday morning here in beautiful East Tennessee, where sometimes the morning temperatures can wake you up and say hello. As we begin our worship this morning, I'd like to invite you to please turn into your bulletin, stand as you're able, and we're going to sing some good old ones from another day in time. Amen. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart to stay. Now, as Patty continues to play right there for just a moment, I'd like to remind you, as both the other pastors were reminding me a minute ago, I'm not necessarily a morning person. But once you get me up and get me cranked and rolling, then it's time for us to roll. When we show up in the house of the Lord and we start singing joy, joy, joy down in my heart, kind of ought to look like it and kind of ought to sound like it. Otherwise, the words kind of become a lie. Amen? All right, let's try that again on that first verse one more time. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Sing it like you mean it. Amen. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart to stay. Second, I've got the peace of path of understanding. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passeth understanding. Down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus. Down in my heart. Down in in my heart to stay I've got the joy joy I've got the joy 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 down in my heart down in my heart down in my heart I've got the joy 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 down in my heart down in my heart to stay now I didn't write them lyrics and if the inside of your mask is wet after singing I got the piece of the path of understanding down in my heart at my apologies if the mask is a little wet on the inside. Let's welcome one another in the house of the Lord. You may have already visited some, but make actual eye contact with some folks. Give a little wave. Tell them good morning. They can tell you good morning. Good morning, Jan. God bless you. Good morning, Linda. Thank you all for all you do. God bless you, brother. It's good to see each and every one of you in God's house this morning. Now we're going to sing this little light of mine. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Second, won't let Satan. You know, if we just do them two things right there in that song right there, we'd come out pretty good. Amen. Amen. Y'all please be seated as Brother Kerry comes forward this morning. 
to tell us about our opportunities in ministry here at the church, along with the fact we having hot dogs later tonight. Amen. And I love hot dogs, but I'll see y'all there as well as our, uh, our morning announcements. Thank you, Brother Kerry. Uh, good morning, Ebenezer. Oh, yeah, on the cold mornings, these masks kind of come in a little handy, right? It keeps things warm right in there. It's kind of nice, a big difference from the summertime. Uh, just a few announcements for today. One, uh, tonight is our pastor appreciation dinner, so that's going to be tonight at 5. Uh, there'll be no service afterwards. Uh, you don't need to bring anything. It will all be provided, so just bring your wonderful, lovely selves. Uh, you can bring your husbands as well if they want to come uh, along with you. October... 28th, uh, Wednesday night, we're going to have our Wednesday night youth out at the Beasleys. We're going to have a bonfire, uh, have s'mores, and have our usual Bible study and music time. So just uh, if that involves you or somebody around you, just make note of that. On Halloween night, uh, we're going to have our trunk or treat up here at the church from 4 to 6. Uh, two ways you can help out with that. One is by signing up to decorate and hand out candy for your trunk or your space if we have to move it inside. Uh, the other way you can help out with that, if, you, if you're not wanting to do that, uh, we have the big blue tub back there. If you could fill that up with candy, we want to make sure we have more than enough candy to pass out uh, so we can just fill some trick-or-treater bags uh, at, with candy as they come. And we'd be appreciative for you, to you for doing that. Also, October 31st is the men's breakfast. And that's going to be at 8 a.m. at the Beasley, so just make note of that if you're part of that. Uh, and then finally, uh, back there we have a little Christmas tree looks like my house this time of year um, we are going to be filling up the shoe boxes for the operation christmas child uh, so there is a flyer back there that has all the information uh, on it that you would need to know uh, if you have any questions about it please see uh, melody cody julie province or jan thomas and they'll be glad to fill you in uh, with whatever information that you need uh, and so that's all the announcements i have for today and so now i'm gonna have it over to brother tim sprinkle for our morning prayer Good morning. This is the time of the service where we go to the Lord in prayer to pray for our service and also our church. So if you have any burdens, this is the time to, to bring them to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. And we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come into your house <clears throat> this morning to worship you. Uh, I know it's not a conventional, quote unquote, worship service, worship center, I mean, but I'm thankful that we have this place that we can come and still worship you. In, the, in this time that we're in, in in the pandemic, Father God. And we just thank you for that. Father God, we pray for our country uh, as we approach this election. Uh, help us to vote for who you want in that office. Uh, not by what we think we want or what we feel we want, but that uh, we pray about it and we get in there who you want in that office, Father God. Just help us to do that and guide us in that direction. Be with us now as we go to the end of this service. Be with Brother Bobby as he brings us the message this morning. And just have him lay out the words that we need to hear on our hearts. And let us open our hearts and our minds to hear from you this morning as he brings your word. Be with the music and be with Brother Kenny as he leads us in that. And just help us to worship through that this morning. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Um, as you all know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Uh, so I'm here to recognize our college staff this morning. Um, I'll start with Brother Kenny. Um, based on the information that I was given, he has been with us for six plus years. Brother Kenny. <clears throat> Brother Kerry. I also have with, has been with us for six plus years. Um, and as we all know, the family needs our prayers as well right now, uh, more than ever. So in addition to praying for each other, let's always give a special prayer for Kerry and his family right now, but I'd like to recognize Brother Kerry. And finally, Brother Bob, and with the information that I was given, I've got eight plus years for Brother Bob. Hey, 
Thank you all. is from Ephesians chapter 4. The Gentiles have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. treat him and respect him and treat our neighbor and love our neighbors ourselves again we'll come out pretty strong at the end of this world and we'll do pretty good would you sing please with me you are my king with amazing love tied in I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted said amen amen as we can sing continue with our singing you'll notice right down there just what brother Kerry was just preaching freely freely God forgave my sin so surely we can love our brother and sister and forgive them anything they've done to us amen here we go God forgave my sin God forgave my sin
Good morning, Ebenezer. If you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18. Children often amaze me. Recently I heard a story about a young boy named Hunter who disobeyed his mother's instructions. At supper, she had told him to eat all his beans. Hunter did not want to eat all the beans. So when his mother wasn't looking, he dumped the beans in the trash. He got away with that disobedience. Didn't get caught by his mother. But his conscience gnawed at him. He was greatly troubled over what he had done. And he held his head low and he was walking to his room. His mother could see he was troubled. So she said, son, where are you going? He says, I'm going to my room to have a little talk with the Lord. Then she said, is this something you can't tell me? And the boy says, yes, it is. You just scold me and punish me while God will forgive me and make me clean on the inside. Out of the mouth of babes. But this speaks of one of the greatest attributes of our God. Our God forgives. That before we came to Christ, we had tallied up a long list of sins. But when we trusted Jesus at the foot of the cross, all our sins have been forgiven. And as believers, when we come to Christ and we've sinned against Him, if we go to Him with a sincere heart and ask God to forgive us he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and make us clean one of the most beautiful qualities of almighty God is that he extends forgiveness to those who seek forgiveness at the foot of the cross if I was to make a list of the things that I most appreciate and love about our Lord and Savior. His forgiveness is at the top of the list. I know that it fuels my worship. I know that my favorite hymn, one of its verses, speaks to this. That when I trusted Jesus, all my sins are nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Our God is mighty to forgive. And believers, we should love the fact that God forgives us. With that being said, you know what's really hard? Even though we love God's forgiveness, we find it often hard to forgive others. Receiving the forgiveness of God is far more refreshing and warming than giving someone who's wronged us forgiveness. So how do we, as believers, forgive those who wrong us. Jesus speaks to this very issue in Matthew 18. Before we go there, let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning. We are thankful to be in your house, gathered in your name to worship you. God, you are so many things. You are an awesome creator, mighty in power, filled with truth, righteous, holy, compassionate but this morning we are thankful for your forgiveness God may your forgiveness of our sins help us to forgive those who sin against us God there is anybody here this morning that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior may they come to the foot of the cross trust you and find that all their sins have been forgiven And for the believers in this room today, help us to forgive each other as you have forgiven us. God, unto you be our glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. We are in Matthew chapter 18. We're going to start with verse 21. It says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. 
Peter approaches Jesus with an excellent question. How often should I forgive my brother? What is the amount of forgiveness I give before enough's enough? At that time, the rabbi said three times. Some weird way of reading Amos 1, that's what they came to was the number three. But if you notice, Peter is generous. He doesn't say three, he says seven. He's saying of himself, that's pretty forgiven of me. But notice what Jesus says in verse 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Jesus says to Peter, 70 times seven. For those without a calculator, that's 490 times. Is Jesus saying to have a list on your fridge that whenever someone does you wrong, you forgive them and you just mark it, and when it gets to 491, then you can give revenge, then you cannot forgive? No, that's not what Jesus is saying. He says that our forgiveness should be limitless. He is telling Peter to stop counting and start forgiving. Then Jesus tells a parable to teach us how we are to forgive. 23, therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. So we have in this parable a certain king who is settling accounts He's calling in those who are indebted to him. And a man is brought who has a debt of over 10,000 talents. From what I understand, this is over billions of dollars. This is U.S. debt type of debt. It is an amount that this man could never pay. It's astronomical. Remember, this is a parable. Exaggeration is acceptable. Let's continue to read. 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. So the king says to him, since you cannot pay, you're going to be sold along with your wife and children. Not to completely pay off the debt, but to help assuage some of the debt. But if you notice, this man is greatly troubled, and he pleads with the king for mercy. What does he ask the king for? More time. Just give me more time. Be patient with me. I will pay my debt. Verse 27. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. So the king sees this man's humble plea, and he is moved. He does more than the man asked. What did the man ask for? Patience, more time. What did the king give him? His debt is forgiven. He doesn't have to pay. The king shows great compassion by removing a debt that man could never pay. This man was facing himself being sold into slavery, his wife, his children. But the debt was forgiven. This man forgiven of such a great debt, should be overjoyed, thrilled, elated. He should be singing the praises of the king. But notice his response. Verse 28. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. 
So this man forgiven of a great debt finds one that owes him a small debt. This debtor owes 100 denarii. From what I understand, that's about four months worth of wages. This is a small debt. It's one that can be paid. But this forgiven man takes this debtor by the throat and demands payment. Verse 29. So, this, so his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. So this man who owes a small debt falls down and asks the same thing the forgiven man had asked. Give me some time. Be patient with me. He asked the same thing that the forgiven man had asked. Certainly the forgiven man will forgive this small debt. That's not how this parable goes. Verse 30. It says, and he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. The forgiven man would not forgive. He would not even show him patience. He would not even show him kindness. No, he takes the man and throws him into prison. It sure is hard to pay a debt if you're in prison. But the forgiven man wanted to see this small debtor suffer. Verse 31. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Word gets back to the king that the one that he had forgiven a great debt is not being forgiving toward another. Let's read 32 through 33. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? This king calls this forgiven man wicked. Why? Though this man had begged the king for compassion, he would not give compassion to another. Though he was forgiven a great debt, he would not show like kindness, mercy, and pity. Verse 34 through 35. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Now this verse can be very tricky. But a few things. What was the response of the king towards the forgiven servant that wouldn't forgive? God's word says he's angry. And it says the king delivered him over to torturers. Notice it doesn't say executioners. This implies that the king is going to give discipline to this forgiven yet unforgiving servant. As we stop here, remember, this is not about a king and actual financial debt. This is a story to teach a spiritual truth. It is teaching us about forgiveness here's a few truths to each believer here today to help us forgive those who wrong us number one failing to forgive others puts a wedge between you and God when you hold on to unforgiveness it puts a wedge between you and God at the time Leonardo da Vinci was painting the fresco the last supper he was at odds with a fellow painter. This painter had somehow wronged Leonardo. So therefore, Leonardo treated him like an enemy and would not forgive this man, holding hostility, considering him an enemy. 
So when Leonardo was to paint the face of Judas Iscariot, he painted the face of his enemy. He wanted all to see the one who portrayed Jesus down through history as the face of the person he considered his enemy. He took great delight in painting his enemy's face on Judas. However, when it came time to paint the face of Jesus, Leonardo hit a roadblock. He was frustrated. He couldn't find the inspiration to paint the face of Jesus. He struggled to figure out, why can I not paint the face of Christ? That's when God showed Leonardo that his hatred and unforgiveness toward the other painter was holding back him in his relationship with God, therefore holding him back in life. Da Vinci convicted, forgave that painter, made peace with that fellow painter, and removed that face as the face of Judas. Then he was able to paint the face of Jesus Christ and complete his masterpiece. I share that story to relay this truth. When we harbor unforgiveness in our hearts towards another, it will disrupt our communion with the Holy God. Let's go back and read 32 through 34a. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry. When this king heard that this forgiven man was unforgiving of an astronomical debt compared to a small debt, says the king was greatly angry. Remember, this is a parable, an earthly story told by Christ to speak of a heavenly truth. The king represents God. Believer, our God has forgiven us a debt we could never pay. When we refuse to forgive another of a small debt, it angers God. And at that point, it puts a wedge in our relationship with the Holy God. I'm not going to read the last portion of Matthew 18 again, just to say that God disciplines those He loves. And when we have unforgiveness in our heart towards someone else, God's going to discipline us. We may experience a lack of peace, conviction, the Holy Spirit burdening us, our prayers may seem like bricks. The sweet fellowship we once had with God may be broken. Our souls could be troubled. I can go on. But whenever we hold an unforgiving heart towards another, it's going to put a wedge in our relationship with the Holy God until we forgive. So if this is true, let us all forgive immediately. That should be simple. However, maybe you can say the same thing. Forgiving someone who wronged you is not an easy thing to do. It can be difficult. So how do we forgive? Point two, we must remember how God has forgiven us to help us to forgive others. The following story may seem a bit gross, but follow the spiritual truth found in it. There was an American traveler going through the jungles of Burma, and he was led by a native guide. There was a city they were going to, but to get to this city, they had to wade through this river. And as they came out the other side of the river, the American noticed that there was leeches on his torso and his legs. And he said, I'm going to start ripping these leeches off. But the guy says, don't do that. If you rip, rip the leeches off, it will leave pieces of that leech in your skin, cause an infection. 
So here's what the guide recommended. To get a warm, balsam bath. Soak in it. And after a few minutes of soaking in that warm, balsam bath, the leeches will just let go. Gary Preston, who tells this story, makes this point. That when someone wrongs him, hurts him, he cannot simply yank that uh, injury off of him without leaving bits of bitterness and malice and resentment. He says the only way to truly be free in forgiving someone else is to bathe in the forgiveness that God has given him. And the same goes for us. For us to forgive others, we must just bathe ourselves in the great forgiveness that our God has given us. And that will release us to forgive others. Christian, the only way to truly forgive someone who's wronged you is to remember the great forgiveness God has given you. That's what this parable is all about. A man has an astronomical debt he could not pay, yet he has forgiven that debt. So he should be able to forgive a smaller debt. That's this parable. Christian, hear me. We are to forgive those who wrong us. And to do so, we must remember the great forgiveness God has given us. Just to help us this morning, if you don't know, I want to tell you what God has done with your sin. The sin debt that you had you can never pay. When you ask forgiveness of God, here's what God has done to your sin. This is a list composed or compiled by Rosalind Goforth. Number one, God has laid your sins on His Son Jesus. Isaiah 53, 6. Two, Christ takes your sins away. John 1, 29. God's Word says He takes your sin as far as the east is from the west. He washes away your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1, 7. He cleanses and makes you as white as snow. Isaiah 1, 18. He completely pardons your sin. Isaiah 55, 7. And He remembers your sin no more. Hebrews 10, 17. That's just a partial list. But that's what God has done with your sin debt that you couldn't pay. When we think of what He's done for our sin, that should help us. It should release us to forgive those who wrong us. Which leads us to point three. Once you forgive, you must let go. Once you forgive, you must let go. There is something at this church that is easily missed. You pass it by every time you drive into our parking lot. It is our old church bell. It sits in our front yard of our church. That bell is no longer rung, but many of you remember a time where that bell was rung announcing to Tucky Ho that church had started. For those who don't remember when church bells were rung in church, here's how it worked. You had the bell in the bell tower with a rope hanging down. And you would grab the rope and pull it. And as you pull it, it would make the bell ring. For those who've ever stood underneath one of those bells, pretty loud, it gets your attention. When I was a kid at Beaver Creek Baptist Church, I loved being allowed by the Sunday school attendant to have Sundays where I pulled the bell. To, to tell everybody that Sunday school had over, is, is over with and it's time for church. Now, I was a little fellow at the time. I could reach up and pull it, but when I pulled it down, you know what it would do with me if I held on? It'd lift me up. So I'd go 
toward the ceiling. I wouldn't ever touch it, but I get pretty close. I loved it. But if I was to grab that bell, yank it, and then let go, what would happen to the sound of the bell? It would be loud, then it would fade away, and then you wouldn't hear the bell anymore. You got that? However, what if I held on to the rope? What if I held on, and as I reached the, the ground, I would jump back up again? What would happen with that bell? It would continue to ring. Until what? I let go. When someone does us wrong, betrays us, hurts us, sins against us, inside our heart, it's like a bell ringing. It rings out pain, anger, and hurt. But if you forgive that person, if you forgive them and you let it go, that pain and hurt slowly fades away. However, if you are wronged and you don't forgive or you forgive, but you keep rehashing what that person has done against you, it's like hanging on to that bell. That pain is going to continue to ring. Resentment, bitterness is going to continue to ring in your heart. I know what that's like. Many years ago, I know someone who wronged me deeply. Without going into details, this person wronged me multiple, many times. And I'll be honest with you, I never wrote it out on a piece of paper. But in my mind, I had a mental list of all, this, all the things this person did me wrong as. And you know what I would do with that list? I would think about it. And I would rehash what this person did against me. And I would stew. It would ring pain and rage in my heart. It would bring to my heart resentment and bitterness. Every time I thought of that list. But God was convicting me, so I got on my knees and I forgave the person that wronged me. You know what I did the next day after I forgave that person? I kept thinking about that list. And every time I thought about that list, I would stew all over again. And then I felt like I had to get down on my knees and forgive them again. So I would get down on my knees and forgive this person. And the next day, you know what I would do? I'd pull that list out again and begin to stew over the wrongs they did me. So there was a cycle of me forgiving and stewing that went on not for days, not for weeks, but for months. And I was wondering, what's wrong with me? Why have I forgiven, yet I'm rehashing this pain over and over? And God showed me I had not let it go. So I got on my knees, I forgave the man, and I gave the list to the Lord, and I let it go. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I never forgot it. I know the list right now. I could tell you the list right now. But you know what I've chosen to do? To never return to that list. For to rehash that list again is to ring that bell all over again. So I chose to let it go. Some of you in this room right now, you're still holding on to a list. Maybe multiple lists. A list of wrongs that's been done against you. Here's my word to you. Let it go. Forgive them and let it go. If you want to be free, you must forgive and let it go. I want to close with this quote from C.S. Lewis. It says, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. Forgiveness is not easy. Forgiveness is not natural to us. But believer, we have an example. As our God has forgiven us, we must forgive those who wrong us. I'm going to have the musicians come forward. Let's pray. Let's bow. Father God, we come before you this morning. And this is a subject that each in this room has to battle. 
is to forgive those who wrong us. Because we're human. We live on a fallen planet. We will have lost people who wrong us. We have believers who wrong us. But we must look to the cross of Calvary and the great forgiveness that you've given us to help us to forgive others. God, I pray you take this text, this parable from Jesus, and may it sink down so that we are not forgiven yet unforgiving believers. Let us be believers who've been forgiven a great debt and we forgive small debts that those around us sin against us. Help us to look like Jesus. God, unto you be our glory, honor, and prayer. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. To close this message, if you're here today, let's go ahead and stand. If you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus, you have a sin debt. From the day you were born, you're racking up different sins against mom, dad, friends at school, your enemies at school, racking up sins, things you do wrong. And nothing you can do can erase that debt except one thing, and that's go to Jesus. You can't take your sins away, but the blood of Jesus can. My word to you is to trust Jesus today. Be forgiven and go from death to life. So if you're here today and you've never trusted Christ, come talk to me. But for everyone else, I want you just to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here today, and you've got some unforgiveness in your heart, there's someone, maybe more than one person, that you harbor unforgiveness in your heart for. And you're ready to do as Jesus would have you to. You don't want to be separated from God. You don't want sweet fellowship broken. You want to forgive as you've been forgiven. Would you raise your hand? God sees those hands. If you're here today and you've let go, no. You've forgiven, but you still harbor that list. You still think of what that person did against you. And though you've forgiven them, you still struggle. You've forgiven, but you have not let go. If that's you, you're struggling. Because you're not at peace. You have pain in your heart. But you want to be free. And you want to raise your hand and say, Lord, help me to let go. Help me to let go. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Father God, we come before you this morning. We are thankful that you are a great king that is able to forgive all our sins. God, we stand amazed at your forgiveness. Help us to be a people that forgives others. God, unto you be a glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brother King. Leave this place reminded that we are truly a forgiven people, and may we be free with our forgiveness as well. Would you sing along with me, This Little Light of Mine? Go forth and let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of Bless you.